That's all of it right there, yes sir. Okay, crispy. Bombs away. Welcome back to the channel, Fishing Freaks. We've got a good one here today. Right behind me, these are the brush piles that we have built. I was able to load four of them successfully in the Crispy Collector and drive them up here to the Battle Springs Lakes where we have a bass lake right behind us and we have a crappie lake which is just down the road. This one's got some great bass in it and the crappie lake has some good crappie in it but there's nowhere for those daggum things to go except on the bank around the edge where some reeds are growing in shallow water. In the middle it's like five or six feet deep so we're going to take our structures that we've made, give these crappies a place where they can go and hide in some structure. Today's fishing experience is proudly sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box, longtime partner of the LFG channel and the Guggen Squad. As always guys, if you want to get your first MTB box sent to you for as low as five bucks, all you got to do is use the code MONDO. Go to the website, it's linked down below, right there at the top of the description. Go there, check out all of the things that MTB has. First of all, they have a bunch of different boxes. You don't just have to do bass. You just don't have to do the pro box like I use every month. Pick something that's right for you that fits your budget. And they're constantly discovering new baits and putting them in the box so you can discover new things, even if you're an old crusty angler like me. <laughs> that's not true, I'm not crusty at all. <laughs> Anyways, the point is it's a great thing to get for yourself or a family member or someone that loves to fish. It's a great gift if people are into fishing, thinking about it. Here goes my daggum. We're also gonna take a look inside this month's Pro Box and do a little dangling in the bass lake while we're waiting on the crappie piles to get populated. We're actually gonna see if crappie are gonna get on these things by the end of the day. We'll see. But thank you again for MTB for sponsoring today's video. Let's go dump these piles in the lake. Okay, so fantastic Gabe is here. He manages this place. He's gonna help me out tremendously. He's got a side-by-side, -side, and instead of me going out there with like four of these things and it being, well, it'd probably be more entertaining for you, but we're gonna be safe, and he's gonna actually uh, help me out and help me uh, load these on one at a time from the dock area. We're gonna load these in there right now into the, the old Can-Am drive them down about 100 yards. That sounds better than walking them, I think. Oh man, I'm just hoping she starts. All right, let's get the old crispy in the water. Oh, this is when you need the boots. Woo, it's been raining out here for sure. Almost past the boot level. Ugh. All right, first of all, we got to make sure this thing starts, but I'm fairly confident it will. Uh, see if we can get her going here. First pop. Yeah, baby. Come on. Come on, Crispy. She's a little smoky. Oh, yes. You got string and bottles. Perfect. So the reason that we need the string and the bottles is because we're going to attach the string to one of the, the tops of the trees so that we can come back and identify them later. Now, some, some of these, like this one right here, pretty tall, it's almost six feet tall. It might actually stick out of the water. For planting these four brush piles in different areas, we're then gonna study them and see which ones need to be added to, if fish are really going to those or not at all. We can tip, pick them up, move them, uh, whatever, and just kind of add and subtract according to what the fish tell us. That should do it, yeah, we got it. Okay, sinking. Not sinking though, just audio kind of sinking. Oh yeah, ripping it up. Okay. Come on, little Yamaha. Stay golden. 
Stay golden, crispy collector. I'm gonna run this one down this ditch. So the nice thing about this area is that the reed line, you know, in the spring, I'm sure the crop you're gonna be lining the, the reeds, but when it gets cooler, when they wanna get a little bit deeper, this is a good spot for them to come. Take our bottle here, just tying a little uni knot to that so that can slide down and stay tight around the neck of the bottle. Just like I do on my knots with the flareos. Right up here, do the same thing. Oh, we're gonna bump our engine back that way. What an odd deal this is. Whoa, okay, don't wanna fall out. All right, now when we dump this, we wanna make sure we're not getting caught on anything. Is everybody ready? We're gonna move it to the back deck first. And we're gonna dump this sucker in, there we go. That is the perfect depth. That water bottle is just right at the surface. I did not plan that, but it's exactly how it went. That's awesome, because that one, that was one of the tall piles. It was probably like five and a half, six feet tall. And now we know that that thing is in the correct depth where it needed to be. So I wanted that one in a deep spot. Yeah, just set it, set it right there in the front. I think I'm gonna stick this one down by the light post. So on this one here, old Gabe was telling me the old men that used to poach on this place said that the crappie, the hot spot for the crappie would be right here by this light post. And I guess it's because there's some sort of concrete structure that might be close to here. So what we're gonna do is just put this right out in front of that. I'm not gonna mark this one with string because we have literally a landmark right up front. Right there, yes, sir. Okay, crispy. Bombs away. Oh, we almost lost the GoPro. That sucker's gonna stand up. Well, that's perfect. That's the perfect depth. That'll do. I had Canadian flashbacks right there when I fish in a cannon out of aluminum bow. Okay, this one's just kind of like in a flat area, mid-depth. I'm gonna see if this one will lay down on its side. It's not going to. It's going straight down. Well, there's another one that's perfect, like in the perfect depth. Okay, the last one left. Old big boy right here. This one's gonna go right off to the side because we don't wanna do out front in case people are gonna jump in the water. We're going, you know, cannonball style, having too many white claws out here. So right off here should be about five or six feet deep. That is the perfect, where Gabe is, is like the perfect, you sit there, you put your little dangle pole off the side, bloop, bring up the crappies. One, two, beautiful. Oh my goodness. That's prime. <laughs> that looks good. That's gonna be good. I thought I could do this by myself, but, and I could, but it was definitely much easier <laughs> with two people. A buddy sport, I highly recommend it. Also goes good with Coors, possibly. If there was ever a time for a yee yee, this would be one. Yee yee! Okie dokie guys, all the piles are planted now. I'm just really happy where, where we put them and with Gabe's experience, history out here, I think it's gonna be lights out. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna launch the Crispy Collector into the Bass Lake and we're gonna go over 
what's in the new mystery tackle box for this month. I actually got two this month. And then in our January box, we have some wintertime fishing lures, as you would expect. Take a look at our box card. What do we have? Reaction Strike XRM. That's gonna be a jerk bait. That's an 80 millimeter jerk bait. We've got a uh, Carl's Amazing Baits Shipper Crank, which is a tight wobble crank bait. Where did it go? Here it is, right here. Shipper Crank. We have a Guggen Squad Zinger. You ever seen that before? Who? I have, and it's a dandy. That looks to be a 3 8 ounce white. For some reason, white in the winter. Just remember that. Winter white. White and chartreuse, more spring, winter white. I don't know what it is. Seems to be a thing though. We have a Molex Nano Jig. Tiny little jig. This is gonna go good on what I'm gonna have to throw this on. I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. It's gonna be an interesting challenge. Pairing up with that, we have Z-Man TRD Hogsy, which is like a little creature bait for your little micro jigs. And then we have a penetration hooks, E-hooks with keeper, which is just like a uh, like a Cinco style hook uh, and excite baits uber shad. So it's like a shad like plastic. I think we can catch fish on every single thing out here. My dangle unit for today, ladies and gentlemen, is a 10 foot crappie jigging pole. Yes. At the meetup me and Robert at at Fun and Son. Uh, this company Bonehead Tackle, they were there. They were selling a lot of their jig heads and uh, crappie plastics and gear they do all kinds of stuff but anyway they had these poles there uh and i was like man I'd be, i've been in need of a jigging pole i was literally gonna go to one one of the retail stores this week and and shop for them and get one and this happens to be um a decent one so i'm gonna give it a shot and and see and i brought that out here for crappie fishing and happened to me it happens to be my only Rod in real situation. A thousand size reel and a 10 foot daggum crappie jig and pole. I'm just gonna shut her down. Tie on. And just start catching them. I mean, why not? Why not? This place, y'all, is one of the most magical bass fisheries I've ever seen. They didn't even know if there was really that that many bass in it. They were literally like, yeah, put a boat and see if there's, if there's bass in there. There used to be huge bass in here and then the lake, um, the dam exploded and all, all, the, all the fish left, like they were all dead. So now they're definitely alive. Let me just show you. Now, if y'all thought that I wasn't gonna start with my own brand spinnerbait, you must be crazy. I just gotta say, open up one of these pro boxes and finding a spinnerbait <laughs> that I helped create and my buddies I'm in business with and have a brand with is in the box. It's really cool, but catching a fish on the first cast with it might be even cooler. Look at this rod, y'all. What a whippersnapper it is. Yeesh. Well, he fell, fell victim. Fell victim to the slow roll. That's how you want to do it. Three eighths ounce. Not even throwing a trailer on here. Look at that. I can cast this puppy. Feel everything. That's how you want to do it in the winter. Slow goings. You almost just want to hug the bottom. Hug the bottom cover. In this case, it's grass, but rocks. Oh, goodness. There's one. Hello. Oh, we got light line. This is, this is fun. This is next level here. Jigging crappie poles with spinner baits, baby. <laughs> this is fun now. This is a decent fish. A deep, oh, a, a real big one could get nasty on this thing. Dag gum, y'all. And they're not even fighting that hard because it's cold out here. Look at that. Won't even give me a jump. Old Crispy. Old Crispy ain't going to get them bass today. Yes, sir. Look at that. Decent one there. I'm scared of what a, like a four or five pounder might do. On our spinner baits, they all come with these bands right here. Um, that's to prevent your knot from slipping down. You know, I'm using braid, so braid's particularly guilty of, of sliding on uh, spinnerbait arms like that. Um, you can take it off if you want to. If you're fishing in uh, a lot of grass and things, you may, may want to do that. Um, but I'm fishing grass here and don't seem to have a, a problem with it. Um, and all these skirts are hand-tied, y'all. They're hand-tied so that um, you get... Uh, first of all, it doesn't come off, you know. That's the worst thing about fishing a, a cheap little spinnerbait. The, um, 
the bands they'll they'll break or they'll slide down and that's really unfortunate we do a double plastic keeper on there as well just like we do with the jigs so that whatever trailer you put on here it's going to stay on there you don't have to fool with it and uh high quality blades on this uh on this white one right here they are just uh it's a nickel but it's colorado willow tandem uh, i really thought that would be the best overall for for everyone like if, if i had to throw a one spinner bait for the rest of my life it's going to be probably a half ounce a half ounce colorado willow tandem uh golden and uh, nickel uh tandem as well but anyway that would be the combo but colorado willow tandem just seems to have like the best overall thump presentation i'm getting another bite i got him i got him i got him i'm surrounded by him y'all oh my gosh i am just whacking them on the spinnerbait it's no question and they are they're liking this little point that's right here too oh my gosh that thing is a dink thing is a dink and it was putting up a fight Jeez, man, that one needs to be cold, honestly. All right, trolling motor, we're gonna need you to work. Try some of the other things we got in here, but this is one tactic you can take to the bank in the winter. Slow roll, white spinner bait. Oh, nicking the grass there, just getting in the grass. I'm actually finding that fishing this low gear ratio, this is probably like a four eight or a five one on the spinning spinning oh i just had one there on the spinning reel oh there's another bite got him whacking the crud out of this thing jeez oh boy yeah and and how are they going to get off i've got a pin with a 10 footer softy he's coming to maybe jump no can't do it he's too cold thought about it little tiny little tiny That'd be another color right there. We want to try to grow some bigger bass out here. So the whole key is, you know, with these, with these lakes like this, they don't get fishing from the public. So you have to manage them by taking fish out to try to grow big bass. I mean, it's really depending on what you want, but most people, you know, they like catching five to, you know, five pound bass or bigger. That's, that's the goal. Take some of the little ones out every once in a while, let the big ones grow and enjoy the Mondos. Oh my gosh, that has to be a good one. Smoked it. Big time. With this braid, I don't have to set the hook, really. Just keep reeling on them. Look at that. Oh boy. Hi. You are a dandy. Yes, sir. Oh yes, sir. You're a big and You're a good one. You're good and you're maybe not a big one, but I'll take you. I'll take you on the spinnerbait. Goodness, y'all. Spinnerbait catches them all times of the year. You could probably fish the spinnerbait all year round. But, ah, come here now. You're hooked in a weird spot. Don't like it. Lower jaw, you got the old lower jaw hook. Must have really twerked on it when he hit it. Nice fish right there. Cool. All right. Let's see what else we got going on in there. I apologize. I thought this was a 10 footer. The 10 footer is in my truck. This is an eight footer. I got an eight foot jigging rod. I kind of like it too. I'm not going to lie. Got him. Fish on. Oh, and it's a good one. It is a good one. On the crank. A little deeper getting down there like six foot haven't got as many bites but that's a good in there oh it's just cold and lethargic ah decent fish don't have pliers in the crispy collector i need to get some there we go little perch he smoked that thing like for a cold bass it was a solid boom. one thing i really want to throw in here just uh i want to feel it on this rod and i think it'd be a fun just a fun thing to fish even if i don't get that many bites is to throw that little jig that little micro jig 
I love jigs, all kinds, finesse, punching, whatever. Give me a jig at all times, I wanna throw it. And I actually have a tremendous rod combo here um, <laughs> for throwing it. <laughs> Normally I would, I would not be able to throw that, but there's another one. Got him, got him on this little point flat spot. Not really sure what's going on here, why these fish are really holding to this, but they are. I wanna try throwing that jig up there. Oh, we got our first cold jumper. You win, you win the award today. You're the only one that has jumped. And release. Always sniff a worthy fish, y'all. It's good luck. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta put the old Nano on. Molex Nano. Look at these fine gentlemen on the front here, Mr. Brandon Polinick. I talked to him uh, at the meetup two days ago. Justin Lucas, James Elam. I know, I know all of those folks right there. Look, look at they all have beards. Must be the thing. Wish I could grow one like those fine gentlemen. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna fish this jig that they uh, they seem to think is pretty juicy. Now we're gonna take this micro jig uh, and. Oh, man, it's really sticking in that grass. Pretty hard. This thing is not designed to be a, a grass jig, obviously. This is this is really designed to, um, to be probably fished in, like, kind of a rockier situation. Um, maybe look like a small crawfish or, I don't know, maybe throw around something else. But anyway, a lot of other situations other than grass. That comes down to like head design and the the line tie placement and obviously weed guards and things like that. Look at that! Look at that little thing, man. This is dang. I can catch crappie on this. I promise you. Ten pound braid on here. Oh, I got. Oh, I had one. I didn't even know it. I had one. Oh, another one's got it. Got him. Got him on the jig, baby. Oh, that was sweet. Oh, I felt him that time. What do we got here? What do we got going? What do we got going here? Oh, I love it. I love your fight. On the <laughs> God, I love jig fishing. It's so awesome. And that's a decent one, too. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, y'all. You got to love it. You got to love it, baby. Oh, yeah. Look at that tasty nugget right there, y'all. Yummy. Got that little jelly bean in his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can learn you one thing today, let me learn you this. There's never a bad time to fish a skirted lure. Spinnerbait jig, bladed jig, all times of year, any condition. They're go-tos for me. Back at the crappie lake for one last dangle. Beautiful drop of our brush pile right here, right next to the dock. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect for the depth. So we can jig on all sides of this. I actually want to go all around this dock and see if there's just any any kind of fish that'll lead a jig that we can just go straight dangle on. I'm actually going to use this little micro jig because it's about the same size as a vertical line tie like a crappie jig would. So let's just drop it on down, see what we can get. Oh yeah, we're all up in that brushiness. Well, unfortunately, no fish on the pile thus far. However, it's only been a couple of hours, so I'm not too worried. I've actually been seeing some activity. Okay, oh, there's another fish that just came out right out there, and that is right along the line. So out there about 100 yards, uh, there's a bottle that's up there, and that is our deepest pile. And I'm really excited about that one because I know there's like, there's a ditch where they pushed up, pushed up to make this dam, there's a ditch right out there and that that one is set up to be a good winter time one and summertime one. Oh, another fish right there that was a gar though that was a gar don't get too excited 
No one wants to really eat gar. I hear alligator gar actually good though. Never tried it. I'm out of GoPro battery as well. We are out of time here, folks. So thank you for tuning in today. If you want to see more action like this, um, I want to go plant more piles. I want to work on this place, but also do some, some public water lakes. Um, I also just want to go find piles that people have already planted. Um, the state plants them as well. I'm thinking about doing that pretty soon. So let me know in the comments uh, if you want me to go do some more crappie stuff. I love doing it. I think the world loves crappie fishing. They're so daggum tasty. So I'm gonna sign it off for today, everybody. Thank you again, MTB, for sponsoring today's video. And thank you all for being here on each and every single one. God bless you, and I'll see you on the next video.